Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about special products. Okay, so when I say special products, we're talking about multiplying because product means multiplying. And this is special because it's not necessary, basically. It's special if you have a good memory. It's like shortcuts, basically. And it's really for those who can remember things really well. So if you don't get anything in this video, it's okay. Just go back to how I taught you how to multiply in the multiplying polynomials video. But I want you to at least give it a shot. Give it a shot and see if you can learn these special products, okay? All right, so thanks for tuning in and let's jump into some math. So our first special product that we're gonna talk about is the square of a binomial. So if we have a binomial and we wanna square it, that's the same as saying x plus y times x plus y. Now, when I multiply this out, I can do the FOIL method, I can do the box method, or I can distribute, but basically what I end up getting is x times x, which is x squared, x times y, which is xy, y times x which is yx and y times y which is y squared xy and yx are the same thing so those are like terms i can combine them and this ends up being x squared plus 2xy plus y squared okay now i showed you that to show you that you no know, regardless of what your binomial is see these are just generic variables x and y when you foil it out when you square it and you foil it out you get the first term squared plus two times the first term times the second term plus the last term squared. So if you can remember that when you square a binomial, it's the first term squared plus twice the first times the second plus the last term squared, then you don't have to worry about going through that process of foiling. And if I change this plus to a minus, so instead of that being x plus y squared, if that was x minus y squared, you would get something similar, but with just a change of sign. So that's x minus y, times x minus y. So if you FOIL that out, that's x squared minus xy minus yx plus y squared. These are like terms. xy and yx are the same. Just flip them. So that becomes x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So what's the difference between this one and this one? So look, the x squares are the same. They both have 2xy, except this one has a plus and this one has a minus, and then they both have y squared. So what that means is if you're squaring x plus y, um, then that'll be the first term squared plus two times the first term times the second term plus the last one squared. But if you're squaring x minus y, it'll be the first term squared minus two times the first one times the second one plus the last one squared. Okay, I know this probably look like gibberish, so let's do some examples so it can make some sense to you. In example one, we wanna square the binomial m plus three. So we wanna, what is m plus three squared? Now, m plus three squared is the same as saying m plus three times m plus three. So you could write it out like that and then you can multiply using the FOIL method. Yes, that's what we learned in the last video, multiplying polynomials. However, in this video, I'm trying to get you to see the shortcut method which says when I square a binomial, it's equal to the first term squared plus twice the first term times the second term plus the last term squared. So what I showed you while ago with the X's and Y's, that's what this was saying. You take the first term, you square it, you do two times the first term times the second term, plus you do the last term squared. So what is that equal to? That's M squared, two times M times three is six M, and three squared is nine. So this ends up equaling to m squared plus six m plus nine. Now, that's if you can remember that shortcut method or what you get when you square the binomial. If not, you can always get back to this answer by just multiplying the m plus three. So I could get to this by saying that's m plus three times m plus three. If I multiply that out, that's m times m, which is m squared. That's three times m plus three times m plus three times three, which is nine. Well, that's m squared plus six m plus nine. So I'm just trying to get you to see that if you don't get the shortcut method, you can always get to this answer by multiplying that out. But again, I want you to try to get the shortcut method, okay? Or remember what you get when you square binomial. So let's try some more examples. For example two, I have three different binomials I wanna square, all right? So we're gonna go through and do each one. Start with part A, we wanna square 5z minus one square. So remember that's gonna be, that's gonna equal the first term squared. So 5z squared, since it's a minus, it's gonna be minus two times the first term times the second term plus 
the second term squared. So I don't have to write this as a minus one because that minus is taken care of right here. And so then let's multiply that out. In order to square five Z, I have to square the five and I have to square the Z. So this would be 25 Z squared. Then I would do minus two times five times one, which is minus 10. And then the Z is by itself. And then one squared is one. And so this is what I'll get when I do 5z minus 1 squared, I get 25z squared minus 10z plus 1. All right. So now for part B, I'll do the same thing. I get the first term squared because I'm squaring this binomial. So I get the first term squared plus, because that's a plus sign, twice the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. So the 5r squared. Well, multiply that out. In order to square the 3b, I have to square the 3 and the b. So that becomes 9b squared. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. And then the b and the r are separate. I can't combine those. And then in order to square the 5r, I have to square the 5, which is 25, and square the r, which is r squared. So this will be my final solution when I square this binomial. And then for this last one, I have x times the binomial square. So what I want to do is I first want to square this binomial. So I'm going to leave this X out here. I'm going to put a bracket to show you my work for how I square this. So in order to square this, I take the first term squared. Since it's a minus sign, it'll be minus two times the first term, which is four X times the second term, which is the three plus the second term squared. And so when I do that, I get square the four and the X, I get 16 X squared, three times four or two times four is eight. Eight times three is 24. So this is minus 24 X and then three squared is nine. And so now what I'll do is I'll go distribute that X in. So when I distribute X to 16 X squared, that becomes 16 X to the third. So basically I just add that exponent of one to that exponent of two. When I distribute it to this 24 X, that becomes 24 X squared. And then when I distribute this X to the nine, that becomes nine X. So my final solution would be 16 X to the third minus 24 X squared plus nine X. So this is how you will go through and square binomials. Okay, our next special product is when we have two binomials that we're multiplying, but they're the same, both terms are the same, except one has a plus and one has a minus. If that is the case, then when you multiply this out, you'll get x squared, x times x is x squared, minus xy, that's the x times the negative y, plus xy, that's the y times the x, and then y times negative y, which would be negative y squared. So you get a minus xy and a plus xy, those will end up canceling and you'll get x squared minus y squared. And so what this tells us is when you're multiplying two binomials, where each term is the same, except one has a plus in between them and one has a minus in between them, then the result is gonna be the first term squared minus the second term squared. So let's look at an example of how that works. So in example three, we have a few of those examples where we want to find each product. And if you notice on all of these, they have the same term, an X and a four, but one is positive and one is negative. A two third and a W, one is negative, one is positive. A five M and a three, one is positive, one is negative. So this refers to that second special product I was talking about. So the result would be here, the first term squared minus the second term squared because they're the same and the signs are opposite. So this would be x squared minus four squared, which is 16. And there's nothing you can combine, so that will be your final solution to this first one, all right? This second one, again, because it's the same term, but one is minus and one is plus, that'll be the first term squared minus the second term squared. In order to square a fraction, remember that's the same as saying the numerator squared over the denominator squared. Well, two squared is four and three squared is nine. So that ends up being four ninths minus W squared. So that will be your final solution. That's a four over nine minus W squared. And then for this last one, same term, one is plus, one is minus. So that'll be five M squared minus three squared. So the first term squared minus the second term squared 
In order to square the 5m, you have to square the 5 and the m. So that's 25m squared and 3 squared is 9. So your final solution would be 25m squared minus 9. So that's how you would use that special product. So the last thing we want to look at in this video is how do you find um, the product of bin binomials higher than the second power? So for this example, we want to find the product of x plus 5 to the third. So we're no longer not just squaring x plus 5, we're taking x plus 5 and raising it to the third power. So x plus 5 to the third can be written as x plus 5 times x plus 5 squared. So again, remember, um, when you combine things that have the same base, you just add the exponents. So this is like saying x plus 5 to the first times x plus 5 to the second. If you add those exponents together, that's x plus 5 to the third. Now, why am I writing it with the square? Because now I know how to, using the special product or even using the FOIL method, I know how to take x plus 5 and raise it to the second power. So x plus 5 to the second power, remember that's the same as the first term squared plus twice the first term times the second term plus the last term squared. So I could get this by using a special product or again by foiling x plus five times x plus five. Um, so I still have this x plus five in the front and then I have x squared plus two times five which is 10x plus five squared which is 25. So now I'm left with multiplying this. Now this is not squaring a binomial and I'm not multiplying two binomials, so I can't use the FOIL method. So what I could use is either that distributive method where I distribute the X and the five to each of these, or I could use the box method. And as I mentioned in the multiplying video, the box method is my favorite, so I'm gonna use the box method. So I have a box where I have an X and a plus five. Let me make this a little bigger. So I'm gonna make a box where I'm gonna have two columns, one for X and one for plus five. And then I'm gonna have three rows. So this is X plus five and my rows are gonna be for X squared, 10 X and 25. And then in each box, I'm gonna multiply what's on top of it and what's to the left of it. So X times X squared, add the exponents, that's X to the third. Five times X squared is five X squared x times 10x is 10x squared, add the exponents. Five times 10x is 50x, x times 25 is 25x, and five times 25 is 125. And so what I do is I combine any like terms I have in the box. So my x squares are here, my x's are here. I only have x to the third. If I combine the x squares, 10 plus five is 15x squared. If I combine the 25x and the 50x, then I get 75x, and I have nothing to combine with 125, so 125 remains solo. So my final solution ends up being x to the third plus 15x squared plus 75x plus 125. So what did we do? We first broke x plus five to the third down into x plus five times x plus five squared because we know how to square a binomial. We squared the binomial, we got x squared plus 10x plus 25, and then that left us with multiplying a binomial times a trinomial, and we used the box method to actually multiply that out and simplify it. So here's your final solution, and that's how you would find that particular product, all right? We're gonna work one more like this, so let's look at the next example. This last example, we wanna figure out what is 2y minus three to the fourth? So this one, I can rewrite it as 2y minus three squared, times 2y minus 3 squared. So again, if I add those, if I combine those back together, I add the exponents and that's 2y minus 3 to the fourth. So why did I write it as like this? Because remember, we know how to square a binomial now. So now I can actually square the binomial and then multiply the results. So over here on the side, I'm just gonna square 2y minus 3. So remember that is the first term squared since it's a minus, that'll be minus two times the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. So I'm gonna separate this out so you know I'm doing this separate. So two y squared is you square the two, which is four, and you square the y, which is y squared. Then you do the minus two times two, which is four times three, which is 12, so minus 12 y. And then three squared is nine. So 2y minus 3 squared is 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. So I'm going to replace both of these 
with 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. So that's what I need to multiply. I need to multiply these two trinomials. And that is a lot of terms. So for me, again, my favorite method is the box method. So I'm going to use the box method, and I'm going to have big boxes to multiply these. I need three rows and I need three columns because both polynomials have three terms. So across the top, I'm going to have the 4y squared minus 12y and the plus 9. And across the side, I'm going to have the same thing, 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. And so now I need to multiply nine different things because I have nine boxes in my, in my complete box. So I'm going to multiply 4y squared and 4y squared. 4 times 4 is 16. Add the exponents on the y's, you get y to the fourth. 4 times negative 12 is negative 48. Add the exponents on the y's, you get y to the third. 4 times 9 is 36. That becomes 36y to the second. Negative 12 times 4 is negative 48. Add the exponents on the y, you get y to the third. Negative 12 times negative 12 is a positive 144. 144, add the um, exponents on the variable, you get y to the second. Negative 12 times 9 is negative 108, and that's just the y. 9 times 4 is 36y squared. 9 times negative 12 is negative 108y. And 9 times 9 is 81. And so again, as long as your exponents are lined up from biggest to smallest, your like terms should be in a diagonal. So those are like terms, those are like terms, and those are like terms. And so when you simplify this out, you get 16y to the fourth, negative 48, and negative 48 is a negative 96, so negative 96y to the third. 36 and 36 is 72, 72 and 144 is 216, so that is 216y squared. Negative 108 and negative 108 is a negative 216, so negative 216y, and then you get plus 81. So this would be your final solution, 16y to the fourth minus 96y to the third plus 216y squared minus 216y plus 81. So I know that was a lot of work, but this is how you would raise something to a binomial to the fourth power. If you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you include them in the comments below. If this video was helpful in any kind of way, hit the like button, don't forget that. And then don't forget if you haven't already to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so every time I release a new video, you can get a notification. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and make sure you check out the next video, which is dividing monomials.